it's the next level. And now for the show that's truly too hot to handle. It's the melting pack, and it starts right now. You're listening to the melting pack. Here's your host, Pat Johnson. Well, thank you, Jerome. Hello, my friends. There we go. Uh, welcome to the show, The Melting Pat, the next level network. Today, we are we are off to a great start. Um, today, what I have for you, I got my booster. We'll talk a little bit about that. That'll be brief. Uh, I saw something on Twitter about some cryptocurrency people uh, spending a lot of money on a thing. And then, you know, their thought was much different than what actually is true. How's that for a setup, huh? We got NFL playoffs, of course, and uh, some entertainment news sprinkled in as well, and a song, a new song from new friends of the show, Honey Revenge. So we will get to all of that, and then maybe we will hear from the captain. I don't know yet. Uh, I'm doing this before he sent the thing, so we shall see. But that is, uh, that's it. That's what's on the menu for today. Yeah, I, um, yeah, not a ton. I mean, the, the crypto story is kind of funny to me. Sorry if it's not your thing, but I like making fun of dumb people for doing dumb things. So we will do that in uh, in just a second. But yeah, I got my booster. I know, Pat, what do you mean? You already had COVID. Why'd you get the booster? Well, I don't want Lur to get me again. So I uh, I was like, you know what? They say, hey, get the booster. It'll you know better protect you. I was like, all right, because I listen to the people who have the doctor things and not, you know, Joe Rogan, who says go out in the sun and drink water or whatever the hell he says. Uh, I've talked about that before. If you're taking medical advice from a podcast host, you're an idiot. That's all. And I'm not saying take it from me. I'm saying listen to the doctors. <laughs> That's all. All right. Didn't mean to get so serious off, uh, right off the bat here. But yeah, I got my booster. My arm's a little sore. Just like with the other two, sore arm and I was exhausted for, I don't know, day and a half. Um, so that kind of sucked. But yeah, I just I walked to Rite Aid because the other two, I went down to the convention center and, and it was a well-oiled machine. You know, the military was there, and I'm like, oh, all right. But that's not open anymore. And so my choices were to go to urgent care, which is not far, but, like, I can't walk. Well, I can walk there. But I wanted to see if I could do it at Rite Aid because that's, you know, seven minutes away. So I was able to do that and get in there. And, uh, you know, one other person came and was waiting. You hand off your stuff, and then they bring you back in this little room, the uh, patient consultation area, which I've never been in in a Rite Aid. Has anybody been in this? For something else, like, do you, can you go to a write it and say, hey, I have this rash. Can you look at it? And will they look at it for you? Is that a thing? Is that what they do there? I don't know. I've never been in that little room. It's like a little, um, not a lot bigger than the room I'm sitting in right now, actually. Uh, that's all right. Uh, so I you know, just sat down and she's like, oh, are you feeling sick today? How are you feeling? What's going on? Uh, you got your last shot on this day. Okay, great. Little pinch. One, two, three. Boom. Done. And that was it. And then just, you know, go sit in a chair for 15 minutes. And then get out of here. Because that's what they recommend after you get your shot. In case you have any kind of ill effect, uh, or several, I guess, more than one. Then, you know, someone is there. Like, you're there and you can say, hey, I need help. Like, hey, someone call a doctor or something like that. So they, they make you wait and kind of let it go through and let it kind of, uh, I don't know, marinate in you, I guess. Then that's it. Like, you know, my arms was a little sore for a day or two. And I was t really tired for a day or two. And then that's it. That's all good. So hopefully it'll be all good and uh, things will work out because I don't want to do the thing again. God, um, I will say that like I mentioned when I had the thing, like my hands hurt, my legs hurt. My legs kind of still hurt. I don't know if that's a if that's a booster thing or if that's a COVID thing. Like I'm just going to have to deal with this now. I am going to go to my doctor. Um, they did. So I, I mentioned I did a telehealth, I don't know, a month or two ago. And they said, hey, when you're better, when you're feeling well, when the cough is gone or whatever, then come in for a physical. Well, I was going to do that, and then I got COVID. So now i got to figure out when I'm going to go to the doctor uh, when they say, hey, you know, come get a physical. Maybe I'll tell them about that then, and we'll see what happens. But, yeah, as far as uh, feeling okay, I am. I'm good. You know, we're over the thing. You know, I think I'm over the effect of the booster, which, again, was not much. It was just like the other two. I was just tired, and my arm hurt. And um, if that's all it takes, it's free. It costs me nothing but time. And so, uh, yeah, good to go. All right. Uh, I don't know if I still have any anti-vax people listening, but just uh, I can't tell you what to do. 
I'm not a doctor. I'm not your dad. But just get listen to the doctors, okay? And not the ones who have been disbarred or whatever the word is. That's for lawyers. But anyway, all right. Jesus. I got my booster. That's what I want to say. <laughs> so there you go. Um, I saw this on Twitter the other day where, so I don't really understand cryptocurrency a whole lot. I don't know Bitcoin or whatever else is there. I don't really understand how it all works and I'm not really looking to find out. I mean, I did see that uh, a friend of mine paid off his student loans because of the money he got from Bitcoin. So I feel like I should, I don't know, invest like 50 bucks or something and let that work for me. Is that how it works? Somebody let me, I've never invested in anything. I barely invest in this show and it's free. Uh, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know how any of this works. So if you do know, and you can explain it to me in a very simple and not condescending way, I'd appreciate it. But anyway, not the point, just an aside. So some cryptocurrency guys bought a, there was an auction, I guess, for like a collector's edition of a Dune book. The Dune, I don't know, it's a story or movies or something. I, I don't know. Um, it's an intellectual property. How about that? So they bought this collector's edition of this book and they paid like a hundred times what the asking price was. They paid like $3 million for it, which is insane because it's a book. And like I collect things, I have ornaments uh, all around, but I would not pay millions of dollars for any of them because at the end of the day, they're just sitting here looking nice. And I like to look at them and they're cool, but I'm not spending a million dollars or two or three million dollars. So these guys bought this and this is, they, they tweeted this, I, I don't remember who it was, but they said they have three things they want to do now that they have the book. Make the book public to the extent permitted by law. Produce an original animated limited series. I don't know why you have to put limited. Inspired by the book and sell it to a streaming service. And support derivative projects from the community. So for some reason, these guys bought this collector's edition of a book. And because of that, they think that, well, they bought the collector's edition, I guess, because they're fans of the thing. But this makes me think that they bought it because they thought if they buy it that they now own the rights to create other things with it. Like, that's their plan, to make a series and make the book public. I'm like, buddy, that's not how it works. I don't know why they thought, maybe because they spent $3 million, that they thought they could buy the rights to it. I'm like, that's not, you don't get that at an auction. Like, you have to go through several channels to do that. And uh, even so, it would cost you way more than $3 million, I would think. And I, I just don't know, again, I don't know much about NFTs or crypto stuff or anything like that, but, and I don't really want to know about NFTs. I don't know why, I don't know. I, you know, Bitcoin is mildly interesting to me. NFTs, I don't really care. Um, I just, I know that you can't just buy a book and now own the rights to make the thing of your own. Like if I went and bought, you know, a Spider-Man comic, I would then, even if it's like a limited edition, limited edition, number one, whatever. If I went and bought that, that does not in turn give me the right to go out and make a new Spider-Man show. Like that's not how copyrights and a little, yeah, yeah, see, I can't even finish the thought because it's just so dumb that these guys thought they now own the rights to Dune because they bought a book. And I don't know if you know any of any other stories where, where people have done this, where they've bought limited edition collector material, something or others from other properties like Marvel or DC or whatever, and they now think, or they've tried maybe, to make something else based on that because they thought they have the rights to it, I would like to know because I would like to point out how stupid these people are because that's not how it works. You bought a collector's edition of a book, good for you, you paid $3 million for a book, all right? And I know I'm diminishing it, you know, because I'm not a, I don't really know anything about Dune, but I do know that because you bought the book doesn't mean you get to make a series out of it and make the book public, whatever that, like, to the extent permitted by law is you sharing a picture of the book that you bought. That's kind of it, right? Like, <laughs> like you don't have any other real rights to the material to share it, to distribute it in any way, because it's not yours. You didn't buy that, you didn't create it, and you didn't buy the rights to distribute and or create a project based on it, because all you bought was a book. And I don't know, like, are all the, the crypto people this dumb? I don't really understand what the thought process is, but if you, if you can explain this to me in very simple terms without being a d and if you can, uh, 
you know, point me to other stories where people have tried to do this, where they bought. I want to know if someone has bought, you know, so let's say something under the Disney umbrella, because Disney is very litigious. If uh, if someone has bought like a Marvel or uh, I don't know, a Snow White or something, and then tried to make a new thing without the authorization because they thought, oh, well, I bought this thing. That like if somebody had an NFT of like a Snow White drawing or whatever, I think that's how that works, right? And you think you own the actual thing, but no, you just bought a picture. Like you bought the rights to a picture or something like that. I don't know. What I, that's what I want to know is how, uh, why do people think that they own the rights to things when they buy like a book or a picture? I don't understand it. So somebody let me know. All right. All right. That was, that's dumb. But speaking of a, I don't know. Speaking of TV, did we talk about, did we talked about TV things. I want to make a series. How about that? Does that work? No? All right. Well, we have some entertainment news for you anyway. There will be, in 2023, on HBO Max, a new Degrassi series, and I am very excited about this. It's wonderful news, but of course, it's on the streaming service I don't have. I have several others. That's not one of them, so I'm going to have to, I don't know, maybe someone has this and I can, they can let me watch it. Would that be all right? Next year, somebody have, an, uh, have HBO Max and let me watch Degrassi on there. Uh, so, if you don't know, Degrassi has been described as Canadian 90210, and that's pretty accurate. It was a uh, you know, half-hour sitcom, and it ran for, well, there was Degrassi Junior High and Degrassi High, and then Degrassi The Next Generation, which ran for 14 years or so, and then Degrassi Next Class, which was on Netflix, and now this is coming back as 10-hour-long episodes. So a little bit different, a little more drama, I guess, a little more serious, and a little more uh, condensed, I suppose, instead of, you know, 10 seasons at 24 episodes, you're getting 10 hour long stories. And so you're going to have a lot to uh, kind of shove in there, I guess. They can make it work. And also, I learned that the, the whole series, The Next Generation, will be on HBO Max in the spring. So look forward to that. And yeah, next year, a new Degrassi series. I don't know who's involved. I don't know, like, as far as actors or whatever. So we shall see. But Degrassi, well known for actually casting teenagers to play teenagers on tv so i don't know look forward to that if you know any teenagers in canada in toronto i think specifically let them know maybe they'll go to a casting call and be on degrassi and you could say hey you're on degrassi i don't know um so that's very exciting also speaking of new things that are uh coming back there is a new there are new pardon me king of the hill episodes in development mike judge and greg daniels have uh made a new entertainment company called bandera entertainment and they started another, I think, a couple of projects they have going on. There is also a new Beavis and Butthead movie in the works. Um, I don't have any further details on any of that, but very excited. There is new King of the Hill in development. I think the Beavis and Butthead movie is further along than that at this point. But, um, you know, if you like Mike Judge, then two animated things of his that are coming back that were wildly successful when they were on. They are being rebooted. So get excited for all of that again. Bandera Entertainment is the name of their company. So go check that out. They have some other things, I think, uh, that are on right now as well. So there you go. And finally, just a little aside for you. I mentioned, I don't know, a couple of months ago, I guess, that I was looking forward to How I Met Your Father on Hulu. It is out. The first two episodes are available on Hulu. New ones will be up on Tuesdays. I enjoyed it very much. Um, I would say if you enjoyed How I Met Your Mother on any level, then you should enjoy this show. And I thought about like breaking down the episodes on the show here, and then I decided I didn't want to do that. So uh, that would take much too long, and I don't know if anybody would care. But if you want to come on, well, I don't know. I don't have a lot of time. But if you'd like me to do that and break them down, uh, maybe I'll do that for the Patreon. Ooh, that'd be fun, huh? Put something on the Patreon? No? All right, anyway. and Because if, if I did it on the, as part of the regular show, these shows would be like an hour and a half long, and that's too much. So anyway, How I Met Your Father is very good so far. Um, the first two are up on Hulu, so go check that out. Uh, again, yeah, if you liked How I Met Your Mother, I think you're going to like this one. So there you go with that. And that is all the stuff that's not sports that I have to tell you. See, we, we really, wow, we ripped through. You know what, though? I don't mind doing shorter episodes because it's less work for me and less of me for you. Is that good all at once? I don't, maybe I should have done... Uh, how I Met Your Father recaps on here. I don't know. But we covered a lot of ground. You know, Crypto Bros and uh, gotten my, uh, getting my booster and Degrassi and King of the Hill and How I Met Your Father. We covered all the fun stuff, right? I told you, there's not a lot going on. 
you know what? I'm cutting that out. Um, there's not a lot going on with me. That's what I want to say. So <laughs> this is what you get on the other side. We have NFL playoffs and then maybe the captain. So if you don't like sports, it's almost your time to get on out of here because we have new friends of the show. The band is called Honey Revenge. The song is called Miss Me. And by the way, it's not safe for work. See, I remembered to let you know uh, that you can find them on social media at Honey Revenge CA. So there you go. Follow them over there. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'll put the Spotify link in the show notes and all of that. So yes, Honey Revenge, our new friends. Thank you very much for uh, for saying, yeah, sure, play our song. Do the thing. Again, it's not safe for work. This song is called, just letting you know, this song is called Miss Me. It's the Meltic Pat on the Next Level Network. There you have it, our new friends, Honey Revenge, with their latest, I think it is, Miss Me. It's the Melting Pat on the next Selva Network. I just made that shit up. Uh, <laughs> there wasn't really a solo in that song. I, I just, I heard like a little riff in the background toward the end there, a little melody going on. And, you know, you would think, Pat, why don't you just listen to it a couple more times to get it right and just kind of riff with that instead of doing your own thing. And I thought this would be funnier if I did that. And was it? Am I right? Honey Revenge, if you're listening, I'm sorry for ruining your song. And uh, I understand if you don't want me to play your music anymore, and that's fine. 
because I earned it, I think. Like, I, if I'm going to get, you know, shut down for something or somebody's going to, you know, pull back on their, uh, on their agreement, I suppose, then uh, I, I'd like to earn it. And I believe that I did. The Melting Path, the next level network, Honey Revenge, CA on social media. And uh, tell them I sent you and, and don't mention the riff thing in case they don't hear the show. Because, you know, maybe they don't have to hear that. And they don't have to know that I totally wrecked their song at the end. Um, I love that song, by the way, though. It's like I, I mean, I love every song I get to play. That's the, one of the beauties of no longer having to fill for time on the show is that I can be very selective with what I'd like to play on it. And like if I, I mean, I've mentioned this before, but if I don't love the song, it's not, you're not going to hear it on here. Because if I, like, if I can't have a connection to it, I'm not going to play it because I got to talk about it. And if that's, if I'm faking it, you'll know. Um, also, I think I really, that song hits with me because I'm a bad friend and that's about being a bad friend. And uh, although I, I never really, I'm not like, hey, sorry, I got to cancel today. I just don't communicate at all. Like you could be my friend and we probably haven't spoken in a number of years, but I want you to know I love you and uh, I'm not dead. So there you go. Anyway, where was I? I'm a bad friend. That's what that was. Uh, yeah. So if you don't like, <laughs> How, why, why, why do I do this to myself? Uh, or to you, actually, that's really the better question. Why do we do it to you? So that's all the stuff. If you don't like sports, honey, again, honey, revenge, CA on social media, do the thing over there, tell them I sent you and they'll say, I think I know who that is. Uh, so if you don't like sports, this is your cue to get on out of here. I thank you very much for joining me today. A little bit of a shorter episode, but again, we packed a lot in. So Hopefully, uh, I did all the things you wanted me to do. And if not, then you suggest them to me everywhere at the Meltic Pat. Uh, if you have something you want me to discuss, something that happened to you or someone else that was funny, I don't know. You let me know, and I will do my best to rant and ramble about it for however many minutes it goes. All right? All right. For the rest of us, we're going to do some NFL playoffs. Let's do the thing. The divisional round. Uh, I got to say, last week, those games were crap. Like, there were six of them. Some of them have to be good, right? And they really weren't. They were not good at all. But in any case, uh, geez, we have uh, our new matchups, our next matchups. The, uh, the teams that got buys are now playing, so that's good. We have Cincinnati at Tennessee, and Derrick Henry might be back for the Titans. I don't know. If he is, I... Uh, see, I want to... I'm leaning Cincinnati. Just because everybody's sleeping on them and they're like, hey, Cincinnati, yeah, they're not good. But they are, actually. But on the other hand, there's a reason Tennessee is number one in the AFC. And there's a reason they got the bye. And I heard this on, uh, I think, uh, the SV pod, Scott Van Pelt's podcast. I think they said, nobody fears Tennessee and they don't fear anybody. It was something like that. And uh, you know what? I like Tennessee. I don't love their defense. But I really think that they can, uh, they can make a run here because, again, there's a reason they're the number one seed. They're, the most, uh, they're underappreciated, I think, as that number one seed. But uh, I do think it's going to be a really fun game. But give me the Titans at home. Um, sorry, I know I got some Bengals fans who listen. Sorry, everybody. But I think Tennessee is going to take this. I think they're going to show why they were number one with or without Derrick Henry because if he's back, you don't know, he's not going to be 100%. Because he hasn't played in a while. So, yeah. Uh, but give me Tennessee either way. Let's see. San Fran at Green Bay also on Saturday. Tennessee, uh, Cincinnati's on Saturday. What is it? 4.30. And then I think 8 o'clock or 8.15. San Fran going to Lambeau. Uh, Green Bay's rested. They've got some guys back. They're at home. San Fran is beat up. I think Nick Bosa's out. Or he might be out. He left the game against the Cowboys early. And someone else did also. So they're banged up. Let me say, if San Fran plays the way they did against Dallas, against Green Bay, they're not going to win. But I think either way that Green Bay should win this. Again, rested at home. They've got some guys back. San Fran is beat up a little bit. So give me the Packers to win. And uh, I know it's kind of boring picking the number ones to win these games. But they're number one for a reason, right? There you go. Uh, Sunday games, the Rams at the Buccaneers. If the Rams play like they did at or versus Arizona last week, I think they can win. I don't love Tampa Bay's secondary. They're, they're banged up. They've been banged up all year, but somehow they keep winning because you can't count out Tom Brady. Ugh. Oh, God. Um, you know what? This might be an upset, but give me the Rams. I like the Rams in this one. I just, 
I, I know you can't count out Tom Brady, but you know, the Rams are playing for something right now. Like Stafford came out last week and said, you know, everybody's kind of dumping on me. Like I've, he's made some mistakes over the last few weeks, but he came out and said, you know, this is not how I want this to go. And we're just going to dominate. And they did. And I think, uh, I think they can do it again. So give me the Rams to beat the Buccaneers. And finally for this week in the NFL, Buffalo at Kansas City. Oh my God. I love this game. This game's going to be awesome, I think, or it, it can be, and I think it should be. I have no idea who's going to win. Smart Money will probably tell you the Chiefs should win, but I think the Bills can beat anybody. I think they showed it last week. They kicked the crap out of the Patriots, and over the last few weeks of the season, they kind of showed, hey, don't forget about us. Like the middle of the year, they were kind of a mess, and they came back around and said, you know what? We're going to make a run here. We're going to do the thing. And I think they can. Uh, I think they can win. Am I going to pick the home teams on Saturday and the road teams on Sunday? Man, it's hard to bet against the Ch not bet, but hard to pick against the Chiefs right now. They're so good and they're firing on all cylinders. God damn it! How many more cliches can I use? Give me. Oh man, it's probably going to be wrong. I went six and zero last week. I feel like I could go zero and four today uh, <laughs> for this week, rather. Um, you know what? Give me the Bills. Give me the bills. I'm not betting money on it, so it's fine. So to recap my picks here, Tennessee, Green Bay, uh, Los Angeles, and Buffalo. Those are my picks to win the divisional round. They're probably all going to be wrong. I'm sure it'll be fine. But there you go with your NFL playoffs for this week. Thank you very much for sticking around to hear my dumbass analysis. And now, speaking of smart analysis, yeah, it's going to be great because he actually does research for, yeah, for his stuff. Uh, we're going to turn it over, I hope, to the captain who's going to tell us all what is going on with the Fly Guys. I don't think it's very good, but I know the captain will be excited. He will put on the optimism glasses. Mr. What does he call himself? Mr. Positivity. Mr. Smiles over here. So good, sir. My friend, the floor is yours. Take it away. Hey, hey, Flyers fans. Mark back at you again with another Flyers. Oh, dude. Yeah. Woo. Guys. I am the eternal optimist. I am the light in the darkness. I am the guy that is just struggling right next to you. The Flyers in the midst of a nine game losing streak. Let's take a look at the damage. So last Thursday, they ended up losing three to two in Boston. Just, just a tough game. Uh, Saturday ended up losing 3-2 versus the Rangers at home. Another tough game, but much, much closer. The Flyers followed that up with an even worse game on Monday, losing 4-1 in New York against the Islanders. But the home and home came back to Flyers home ice. They ended up losing Tuesday 4-3 in the shootout versus the Islanders. They're going to take on the Blue Jackets tonight, Thursday. Hopefully, they can turn it around. We'll see what the Flyers can do on home ice. Then they're going to follow it up when the game in Buffalo on Saturday. Then they're back home on Monday versus the Stars. And then Tuesday, they're taking on the Islanders in New York again. So, guys, let's just take a step back. Let's look at what needs to happen. So, the Flyers are not playing defense. They're playing very sloppy. Cannot pass between the blue line they cannot get an effective just outlet passes they can't break out in either the defensive zone or the neutral zone they haven't had that spark that offense that we saw in the beginning of the year so the flyers are really struggling now with this nine game losing streak of course you're going to talk about changes so there is a lot of change being discussed right now hot topic is whether the flyers should trade Claude Giroux give him an opportunity to go to a team with a chance to win the Stanley Cup. That is something that the Flyers are really going to have to discuss. They're going to have to talk about whether it's a changing of the guard type of a moment for the Flyers. It's too early to say for me. I'm not really sure, but I do want to say that the captain has been there through thick and thin. And if there is an opportunity to make sure that he gets a rewarded for all the years of his hard work, I think you have to do right by the man. And then you have to get younger, you have to get faster, you have to get stronger. You need to turn this team around in the right way. So guys, that's my little logical cap on there. But my Flyers cap on there, I want the Flyers to keep going strong. I want them to do what they need to do to win games. Let's hope it's tonight against Columbus to turn it around. So guys, that's it for me here inside the Melting Pad on Next 
level radio. Thank you, good sir. The Meltic Path, the Next Level Network, or you heard something else there. But in any case, that is all for today. My thanks to the captain if he was there. My thanks to Honey Revenge for their tune. It is called Miss Me. You can find them on social media at Honey Revenge CA. And uh, thanks to whoever shared that crypto story, because that was that was dumb as hell, but it made me laugh. And uh, thanks to Science for the booster. How about that? No? All right. You know what? Uh, <laughs> that's Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> that's all for the show. We are done. Next week, I have no clue what's happening. Playoffs, I guess. And then who the hell knows what else? Probably a new song from New Friends. We'll do that. And then... I don't know. We'll find out. Let me know. If you got something going on that you want me to talk about, let me know. Ever at the Melting Pat, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and dot com. Uh, the network is at the next level network dot com and the next level network on, I think that's the Facebook thing. And yeah, we have like 10 shows. So follow us all on, uh, we're on Red Circle and we're also on wherever you get your shows. All right. So there you go. 209 867 7638 for your questions, comments, concerns, observations, and of course, corrections via text or voicemail do the thing over there and that is i think we are all good to go this has been an eight boiler production g love and special sauce i almost forgot what we were going to do g love and special sauce with cold beverage they're going to play us out as they always do philadelphonic.com for more from them and that my friends is our show thank you very much for listening oh boy till next time have fun be safe thank a veteran wash your hands wear your mask Get vaccinated and boosted when you can. And of course, don't do anything I wouldn't do. You've been inside the Melting Pat on Next Level Network. Go crap open a cold one. <laughs> <laughs>